Hello and welcome back for another episode of Show of Your CICD Pipeline. And today I'm here with Jamie. Jamie, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Johannes. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Wie geht es dir heute? Ah, es geht sehr gut. Danke. Oh, you speak a little bit of German. So where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I've, sure, absolutely. I, I'm uh, actually based in Sweden, so I'm from Sweden. I uh, work at a company called Sigma Technology Cloud. We are a cloud specialist uh, company, a partner with AWS and Microsoft Azure, uh, helping clients throughout the Nordics with all their challenges in, in the cloud. Cool. So you're more in a consulting space then at the moment? Correct. That's correct. I mean, the consulting space. That's cool. But but that's not where you and me know each other from. So I think we first met at reInvent last year. Um, that is, is that, correct. Yeah. We, we yeah. met at reInvent in the Builders uh, Dev Lounge since uh, both being community builders. Um, I'm also one of the AWS ambassadors for the partner network. Um, so it's a great, great community to be in, uh, great uh, people to meet. Uh, from all over, all over the world. That's one yeah. of the best. With that, all that, of the that's what I really love about community as well, right? Yeah. So meeting up people and uh, and just talking about things, because I think today we're also not really talking about something that you do at work, or or is this a work thing? No, this is not a work thing. This is a hobby project uh, for my own personal blogging. So it's, it's not work related at all today. No, that's not. that's also fun and that's also fun right um yeah. so um what 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 do you think is the most important thing for you in, in at LBS and at the community at the moment the most important thing in the LBS community at the moment um i i always tend to lean back towards people and meeting people and sharing knowledge but i think that is the most important part of the community and uh, to be able to share what you have been building uh, and why we've been building it mm -hmm. Uh, to, to educate and help others to, to grow. I think that is the most important part in the AWS community. Cool. And that also means that you've been attending the Community Day Nordics last, last week, I guess, right? Correct. I, I did. I was one of the speakers at the Community Day Nordics. So I spoke awesome. about uh, serverless, event-driven, and IoT, my three favorite topics, actually. Wow, that sounds really cool. Um, we are actually planning and preparing the Community Day in Germany uh, for September. Um, and the call for speakers is still open. So if you're interested, we would uh, ha happily welcome you in Munich as well. Oh, uh, that sounds awesome. It's, it's right before the, uh, with the, before the Oktoberfest, actually. So just like two days. Um, so if you fancy to stay a little bit longer, you could even go to the Wiesn. Um, that's not my favorite thing, uh, but um, that gives you a chance at least. Yeah, sounds good. Cool, but without further ado, let's look at your project. What are we going yeah. to look at today? Before we jump over to sharing your screen, um, what is it about? Yeah, we, we we're going to look at um, the thing I built for my personal blog, since I do frequent blogging. Um, and I wanted to be able to have a voice on my blogs, since I think that will add an extra accessibility for people that have difficulty reading or uh, get tired of reading. Or, and also it enables you to do um, other things while listening to, to the content. So, so, so I really wanted to have voice on my blogs. Uh, and I didn't really want to do that manually. So I kicked off a CICD pipeline that will uh, uh, pick up my, my blog post, my freshly created blog post, uh, use Amazon Polly to generate the voice for it and add it back to my Git repository so I can uh, merge it and deploy it back into to production when everything is looking good. Awesome, then let's directly jump into it. So with yeah. that, feel free to start sharing your screen and we're gonna okay, look at what that. you built. Yeah, sure thing. Let's do that. So we let's start with a, just a short, short presentation of, of the project. So uh, to have everyone on, on the same page. As I said, the whys uh, behind it is because I wanted to add voice for accessibility and uh, be able to enable people to do other things while reading my reading or listening to my blog. Uh, it would improve how my content could be consumed. Mm -hmm. It could be consumed in, in multiple ways. And third bullet, it's fun. Uh, I, I needed something fun to build, so why not combine it all? Uh, technologies I'm using, I'm using a static web page created by Eleventy. So mm -hmm. that's what my blog is all about. I use Markdown to write my blog posts, and then I render out HTML with Eleventy. 
Uh, I, I use GitHub and GitHub Actions for everything. And the pipeline is built on Event Bridge, uh, Step Functions, Lambda, and uh, Poly. So well, that's all the main, main, well, well, main well, let, let's, ho let's hold off a second, because for me, the pipeline here should be GitHub Actions, isn't it? Yeah, it, that would be uh, the best part. But since I wanted to do a lot of different things and a lot of logic, uh, I kicked it off using Step Functions and Event Bridge. So I have. Mm -hmm. GitHub Actions here is actually just initiating a pipeline written in uh, Step Functions and uh, Lambda instead. Okay, cool. So, it, so we 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 were going to look at a CI/CD pipeline built on top of Event Bridge and Step Functions at the end, and yep. GitHub Actions is just the enabler for that. Is that correct? What I'm hearing. That is, yeah. Wow, that that's that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I've already had a, a similar uh, similar thing uh, based on a code pipeline where code pipeline was then started uh, and executed. Um, yep. So let's see how did yep. you connect stuff at step function and step functions and things uh, details. Yeah. Let's uh, move on. Let's. So I say I, I create a pull request in, in my GitHub Actions or in my GitHub repository that will kick off my uh, pull request based uh, GitHub Actions that will uh, upload the generated HTML files to my uh, staging bucket in AWS and it will add an event onto uh, Amazon event which that mm -hmm. is what is starting everything so that will kick off the entire entire uh, step function based pipeline mm -hmm. so if we jump into that this is the first part that will happen uh, I have some lambda functions that will fetch information about the pull request uh, it will fetch information about where do the markdown file live and where does the HTML file live? So I get the full paths for these, and I create the information about the pull request, like pull request number, SHAs, and, and that information that I need later down in the pipeline. So at this stage, sorry for interrupting, yep. the Lambda no function will need to talk back to GitHub. This means you will need to have some credentials that allow you to get information back from GitHub. Is that correct? That that is correct. I have a uh, developer token, so I have a personal access token embedded into a, a secret manager that my uh, GitHub or oh, my Lambda functions is using. So it fetches that from the from the uh, secret manager to uh, to be able to talk back to GitHub. Okay, so and those, use, yeah. yeah, those three and Lambda functions then use uh, the GitHub API at the end. They use yeah exactly they use the OctoKit SDK so they they use the in the end it uses the the GitHub API to talk back to GitHub that is correct oh cool yeah so so yeah that is this is just the first step so now we have kicked off everything and I have all the pull request information I need so post that back onto EventBridge and that will kick off the main step function and this is one of the reasons I chose to go with step functions and not use build everything in um, in GitHub Actions, because I needed a lot of logic into this. So it will kick off uh, a first uh, Lambda function that do extract. So it takes the HTML file and it uh, extract the parts in the HTML that I'm interested in. Because I don't want all tags to be read out. I don't want like the metadata tags or heads and, and things like that to be read out mm -hmm. by Polly. So I need to scope down and extract the information that, that's needed. So that's what I do in the extract phase. I pick up the information that's needed and I throw away information that uh, should not be read by Polly. Uh, in the second stage, I do the transformation. So I take the stripped down HTML and the tags I have there, and I transform everything into a, a XML, and I transform it into uh, voice commands that Polly can pick up and use to generate and synthesize the speech. Mm -hmm. So that's done in the um, transform part. Next, I just use the SDK actions from uh, step function. So I don't write any code here. Initiates the poly that will start off the speech synthesizing. And then I wait for the synthesizing to finish off. So I, I fetch that using the get speech synthesize API mm -hmm. and use that SDK action. And I wait until we have a complete, uh, we are done. And then if we are complete with a success i would just post a message back onto event bridge and the pipeline continues uh, if for some reason there is a failure uh, that will just quit this step functions i uh, probably should have some form of notification down mm -hmm. here uh, but that has not been been added yet that that's, um, that we had a problem mm -hmm. so now we have actually generated the voice file so we have generated voice from the html file 
So now I need to add everything back to GitHub because that's where I want everything. Mm -hmm. So that kicks off the final part of everything. Mm -hmm. So I um, set up an S3, I copy the voice object from the S3 bucket. Uh, Polly will generate the voice and store it in S3 for me. So I just copy that object. I have some la logic down here that updates the markdown files. It adds a spe special tag I've created uh, into the markdown file. And then it just creates a new, just just, just create a new key, commit back to, uh, to GitHub and uh, updates the pull request that was added before. Wow, this, then, is a, this is a true serverless application at the end, Jimmy, right? Yes, it is. There is a true serverless. It's uh, ma mainly uh, Lambda functions and, S and uh, SDK actions. I wanted to use this. When I don't need to write code, I don't like to write code. So I use try to use the step function SDK actions in most places, because I think, why write code if I don't need to, right? Let someone else do that. So yeah, that's, like that's copy true. The, copy the object here is, that, is uh, for example, one of the SDK actions I'm using to copy the, the um, file. OK, cool. How long are your blog posts usually? So uh, it's like 1,000 words or 1,500 words? Yeah, it's something like that. It takes probably like a five, 10 minutes to read it out or something like that. Uh, OK. Um, so it, reading time, if you read it, is somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes normally. Okay. And how long is, uh, how big is the files that are being created here? Uh, the, 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 the generated file is around six megabytes. Mm -hmm. So okay. it depends, of course, if it's a huge blog post, it will be larger. If it's very small, it will be smaller. But my post ends up around six meg. Okay. Cool. And that update markdown file yeah. will most probably take care of um, ensuring that this blog post is not treated again and that you're linking to the correct uh, poly file? Correct. That is correct. That's what I'm adding there. So that is one thing I think we should, uh, I can do. A little, my plan is so that we do a short demo. So I create awesome. a dummy, dummy post and we just see the pipeline in magic. And we see that um, you can see in the end that the uh, pull request has been updated with a new commit. That would be awesome. One yeah. one last question before we go there. That sure. create new commit thing yep. is actually going to once again talk to GitHub and it's going to right. create a new commit in the, in the, in the GitHub repository. Yep. Um, if a file is six megabytes, your yep. Bitbucket repository will become really big soon right so um if you if you're putting that back into the the the, bit, uh, the github repository what was the reason for doing that um I, the, the re first reason was i wanted to have everything in git uh this is actually this is a really good question johannes because this is one of the things i am now reconsidering so i'm reconsidering adding the the actual voice file to git and instead creating a, a second repository like an S3 bucket or something like that that I can can use instead. Uh, that would be also mean that I need to change when I deploy to production or release to production, I need to fetch information from that S3 bucket and copy it instead of having it in the Git repository. So it's an excellent question. The reason was first, I want everything in Git. Uh, but as you say, yes, it grows and it, uh, having six megabyte blob files in Git probably not the best practice so that is one of the uh, parts i have on, on my change list so to mm -hmm. say so it will probably change in a, before my plan is to release everything of this like open source so anyone can use it and my plan is then to uh, when i do that that part will probably have changed and not be adding back to git so instead it will just add the updated markdown file and not the actual voice file so yeah, that makes sense. That was what I was looking for. Um, Correct. Now, before we go into demo, we we said we're going to kind of look at CI and CD somehow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're more looking at the pipeline here, right? Because so for, for me, I guess all of the Lambda code that is involved and all of the infrastructure as code that is yep. involved here is something that you're going, going through to do through GitHub Actions, right? So yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so, all of that so deplo deploying this is uh, uh, deploying this pipeline that says uh, is infrastructure as code, and you can deploy it with uh, GitHub Actions or whatever technology you like to use uh, when uh, deploying it to your own product, so to say. Yes. 
Okay, cool. So that means you're using GitHub Actions to deploy the infrastructure as code and also to deploy the, the code itself of the Lambda functions yeah. that we're using Yes, here. correct. Yep. Um, and why did you... So I assume that you're not writing a blog post daily, right? Um, no. So you, how much blog posts do you write a, a, a month? Uh, my target is to write one or two blog posts per month. So that's, that's my, my goal, so to say. So I'm averaging one blog post per month, I would say. Okay, that's... That sounds like something that where you could manually trigger the poly uh, thing instead of building yes. something fancy around it. Why did you decide to automate that? Uh, because I'm a builder and I like to build things. So that's why I did this. I wanted to automate it and I wanted to, to build something. I wanted to try something out and I wanted to uh, build a project that I could showcase and talk about, about the uh, building up an automated uh, pipeline. So yeah, it was for fun and... Uh, a challenge so to say that's awesome right mm -hmm. because that's really what i think we should be doing as builders trying to share our knowledge trying to bring, try things out and you always need a project to try things out exactly. so i firstly yeah. never worked with poly yet and i would be eager to do so um so if you open source this i will definitely have a look and try to implement that for my blog which would yeah. be at the moment wordpress based right so i'm still of one of those ancient guys that used that user interface thing you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but would be cool to be able to use the same functionality at, at the end for wordpress you cool, should so, probably be able to do so actually yeah yeah most probably but uh, the same patterns at least i could yeah, be using absolutely. Okay. Um, yes. Obviously, I would need to adjust some things. So, uh, yeah. without uh, talking too much about slides, let look. Let's look at uh, a short yes. demo on how this actually yes. executes. All right, let's do that. So let's. Uh, I hope you now see my VS Code editor because that's why I'm trying to share at least. Yes, I do. Perfect. So that is this is my blog post. So now what we want to do, I want to yeah, mm -hmm. let's create a start by just creating a. Um, Create a new branch. I hope it's big enough for the recording here. So uh, I would say that I can read it. So yes, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> uh, just set up the branches and stuff like that. And let's just do a little. We do this in the fake way. Let's copy in one of my old posts like this. We do a copy of it. Let's close that one. So here is the audio tag that I'm introducing that will generate mm -hmm. uh, the rendered file. So let's remove that so we don't have that. Let's uh, update just here to say only demo like that. And we just save that file. Add it to our Git. So like that, and let's just push this now. Before I do that, just be, just before you do that, so yep. now what is going to happen after the push? GitHub action will be triggered. The GitHub Correct. action that will be triggered will uh, send an event to event bridge pipes. Event bridge pipes will trigger yep. a step function, and then the other two step functions will be triggered afterwards. Right? Correct, and that's okay. what we're going to cool. look at. So so that's what we're going to jump in here. So. I'm going to just say push here. So let's do that. We go back. So we create ourselves a new pull request. And this is actually what will be. So here is the modified blog, or so to say. So let's just create a pull request for that. So the event bridge pipes event is going to trigger only on main branch then? Uh, it's it's going to trigger on uh, pull request being open towards the main branch. So that is what the trigger okay. here is. Yes. So let's just uh, let this fun finish. Now it runs the build. Um, that is the 11th gen uh, now generating the HTML files and syncing that back up to the cloud. So I can just kick off everything. So that will take like a minute or so for that to finish off. Mm -hmm. In the meanwhile, let's uh, do that. Let's jump into here is the three step functions. As you can see, if you with all the random strings, this has all been generated by. AWS SAM that I use for uh, updating uh, or, or building out my infrastructure as code. So we will look at the uh, collect pull request information state machine. And here's the ETL state machine. That's what generate the voice. And then we have the update request state machine. 
and that is what will uh, add things back to uh, GitHub. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's, now we are deploying the last part, so you should be able to kick this off. Now things will happen really fast, so uh, <laughs> hopefully we will uh, catch a lot of things on this uh, demo, but uh, let's see when it finishes off. We can see here we have one commit for now. Uh, that will then increase to two mm -hmm. later on. Let's see if we can see that some details. So yeah, we are up the uploading to S3. We are almost done. Take some time. So, what is being uploaded here? The complete, the complete GitHub repository? Yeah, it will be uploading the generated HTML file. So the entire oh, okay. block is now being updated. And that is probably something that could be improved. That only ah, so the up. whole block is being updated. Yes. So yes. everything. OK, that yes. so it, yeah. Yeah, there is also room for improvement just to update, so to say, what has uh, been changed, so to say. But, there, uh, there's always room, room for improvement in any oh, yes. project, Jimmy. If, if, not, if, if there's no room for improvement, I don't know what you have been building. So now everything is started or kicked off. So let's check the collect step. As I said, everything runs really fast. So this is exact timing now. So that just run. So we can see that we fetched the information, got the markdown, got the HTML, and we posted the information back. Mm -hmm. So this is like finished in seconds. Let's go to the ETL blog. This should have not been failing. <laughs> That's, That's why awesome. demos are always like that, you know? Yes, this is always the fun part. So for some reason, the start synthesizing has failed. Uh, remember. Oh, yeah. Crap. Because of the blank, most probably. Yes, there's something wrong in, in that. Let's, um, of course, it, uh, I did something. I did something wrong here. Yes, I did. I forgot to do one, one crucial thing, actually. Uh, I now have a blank in this here. So mm -hmm. that's, that's not, uh, it, it, that doesn't work. So I need, no way, let's do it like this. Let's close off this pull request. We, this is why you never should do live demos. I, there are people that but, enjoy doing live demos. So I don't know. This, this that's the fun scary. part of it, right? Because <laughs> because that's when you learn most about how the, the other person reacts on faders, right? Yeah, correct. Um, and that's let's the cool like thing this. as well. So let's just let's try it again, it. right? Yeah. Uh, let's do it like this. So uh, get, uh, let's just uh, do it like this. We change okay. the files. And that's the good part about the process being that fast, right? Uh, we can just redo it uh, yeah. and uh, spend Let's some. Do a force push because we all like force pushing things, don't we? So yeah, that's, that's true. Like... <laughs> that's what I usually only do on a main branch, you know? Correct. Let's see if we can create the new pull request. Um, poly demo. Create pull request. Okay. So let's set. Let's, let's that let's gives in. us uh, some more time to explain uh, yes. what is actually being done by the GitHub Actions while we wait. Yes, uh, we, we can actually look at that code because that's not uh, that much code. So let's jump into like, looking at that code. Um, so here's my poly voice. Let's enlarge everything. So this is what's happening. Uh, I have built, this is on pull request, so it's only when I open a new pull request towards mm -hmm. the main branch. So that when that happens, this pipeline will uh, start running. Um, I'm just using some of the standard actions for checking out. Um, and then I do npm install and npm run build. So that is actually what's uh, invoking the 11th uh, generation of, mm -hmm. of the blog. So taking the markdown files and generating them generating the uh, HTML files. Um, and then in the final deploy, I will just use some static uh, AWS credentials to, uh, that I have configured in GitHub. Sh GitHub supports the OAuth flow right now, so probably something I would, should change, but it uh, works fine. It's been like this for years, so I don't touch stuff that works. Um, so it then uploads uh, everything to an S3 bucket up here. Uh, here's my staging bucket. So it uploads the entire thing up to that one. Uh, and then it calls the AWS CLI with put events, with the event bus name, the sources, GitHub actions, 
the detail type is a uh, pull request open and I add the pull request number because I need that pull request number to be able to fetch information back from them from GitHub. Mm -hmm. So that is the entire uh, voice uh, file or, or the entire GitHub action. So that's what just runs and things sets everything off. Cool. So if we go back, yes, it. Oh yeah, all checks has passed. Okay, hopefully then we have uh, run a new collect pull request information. Um, yes. yes. Uh, lucky we have done that. So that just run perfect. Yep. Let's go back to state machines. And now this one should not be failing. No, perfect. It is running. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> waiting for your screen to update. Maybe. Yeah, oh, now, now I got it. Okay. You got cool. it now? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Sorry. So now, uh, yes. So now we are running. So we are synthesizing the speech right now. So we're waiting here on, and pulling uh, the, the status of the speech synthesizing. I want to do that. So I know. So now everything has just completed. So now I know there is a uh, generated a mm -hmm. file in S3. So now we can go back and then we run the uh, update pull request information. As I said, that runs really fast as well. Awesome. And the new commit should now be have now been created. So if we go back here, that should say two commits. And it does and says added audio file. I'm using that just static uh, commit message all the time. So added audio files, mm -hmm. we can look at that one. And we can see that this tag has now once again been, been added. Um, and we can then, I can then deploy and test and stuff like that and deploy everything to all my production line. Awesome. awesome. That is what done, is done in this, this pipeline, so to say. And the formatting becomes a bit weird because I'm using some of the markdown uh, to update the fr front matter, I'm using one of the third-party li libraries, and, and it changes the formatting, so it looks a bit bigger than it should be. But uh, yes, that is. Uh, and I think that doesn't matter, but that that is cool, right? So you added that audio tag, and this audio tag will now be recognized uh, yes. when you then. And now. When I run my production uh, deployment, so when I run everything in, into production. Uh, later on, I'm not going to do that because that will actually update my my <laughs> that, live live vlog, and that's not that, that's part that makes of this sense. Demo. <laughs> that makes sense. So, so now after, so what would be the next step? You would now approve that pull request. Which I would, would approve then... the pull request, and I would merge it. Um, and when I merge, uh, I will kick off my deploy. Here's my next uh, GitHub action, and that runs on uh, pushes or merges onto the main branch. Mm -hmm. And that will then generate everything once again and upload it to my production bucket down here. And it will then end up, I uh, can show you, then it will end up here on my live blog here as uh, as one of my blog posts. And these are the two I've been doing with Polly. So you will get this bar with the Polly voice being read out. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's this really, blog post really here cool. is is all about this pipeline and how it was built and all of the information. So here's some of the code that I'm using uh, that can be used by inspiration if someone wants to do that before I um, uh, is able to release everything as open source. Uh, my plan is and my hope is to be able to release uh, the entire setup as open source by the end of the week. Awesome. Cool. Then let me make sure that I add that to the link of yeah. the show notes as well and uh, that I help you to market that a little bit because this is really cool. Um, so with that, let's stop sharing a screen and yeah. let's do some yeah. kind of uh, uh, wrap up and see yeah. um, what is what is kind of next for this uh, thing. So you said you're going to open source this? Um, yes, I'm going to open source this. So I'm going to f uh, one change I'm going to do is but the one we already talked about that I'm probably not going to add the actual voice file back to the to git uh, since that will actually make everything grow very very large so that will probably be one of the changes that i do uh, so next after that i will open source everything and add it to my github um, repositories so you everyone should be able to download it uh, the thing people need to add is their own logic because uh, I don't know how your blog is built, so you need your your be able to filter out the tags you want to be read out. You have to build that logic yourself, but that's just a small part. Mm -hmm. So that's the one part. 
Uh, next, I want to uh, improve on this pipeline and I want to extend it. I will actually want to do translations. So I want to be able to have my blogs in uh, like two or three more languages. Cool. And so I want to add an automatic translation to this pipeline. So uh, using uh, other Amazon AI services to translate the text into like German, Spanish, French, mm -hmm. uh, and then have uh, poorly generate voice uh, for different languages. So you should be able to swap. So I want to read this blog in Spanish. You should be able to do, change that on my production side. So that's the next, next step, so to say. That sounds really cool. And this sounds like um, maybe I've heard in the Community Builders program, we have that uh, serverless community project uh, where we also have an organization that is being executed, that is being made available by Matt Morgan. Uh, yeah. It might be cool to, to get people to contribute to that as well and just not leave you yeah. with all of that burden, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that would be fun. It would be fun. And uh, then on the last note, we could also potentially think about getting all of that stuff from GitHub into Code Catalyst, which has been one of my main things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, absolutely. then we can we can see um, if we can replicate the same thing that you're doing in Step Functions using Code yeah. Catalyst workflows, right? Because that would right. also be fun. Uh, yeah. Today, that's not possible, right? But once uh, Adam, uh, AWS uh, offers additional advanced possibilities for the GitHub, uh, Code Catalyst workflows, we might be able to directly trigger Poly from there. Uh, I've heard yeah. that there's something in the works like enabling additional AWS service integrations for the workflows. And then this might be an obvious thing to implement as a, as a real CI/CD workflow instead of right. replicating as CI CD pipeline through step functions, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. essentially what you did here, right? Yes, correct. Um, one last thing before we kind of close out. Yeah. You have three step functions. Why did you not do one big one? I wanted to split things and split logic up into uh, different parts. So I wanted to be able to extend and change different parts individually. Uh, and I, as being a fan of uh, event driven systems, I thought, yeah, I'll, let's split it up and use. Uh, uh, event bridge to in invoke different parts when needed. So if I need to update something small uh, in, in just fetching the information about the pull request, I can do that and just send everything around. Um, if I would build everything in one step functions, my feeling was also that step function would be huge. Mm. Uh, and I I don't really like that. I want to keep things, try to keep it as, sm as small pieces as possible and uh, break it down to individual things. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. And also it's easier to test. Um, from a cost perspective, I would assume you're still below the free limits, right? Um, uh, way below the free limit. It doesn't even get close to, to anything. No. Uh, if you would write a lot of blog posts, you could probably hit the free limit on poly, but mm -hmm. that's the only thing. Uh, okay. But otherwise you would be way below the free limit, yes. Awesome. So yeah, thank you so much for walking us through this. Uh, where can people besides on your blog find something about you online? I, I've seen you appearing in a few other podcasts and stuff like that as well. Yes, absolutely. I have so, uh, I have some of my talks. It's out on YouTube. You can always read my blog uh, that I showed you at aqv.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. Um, just search for Jimmy Dahlquist and you will probably find me there. So that's where I'm hanging around mostly. Awesome. Now let me make sure that I add that as well. Yeah. Um, and with that, any final words or final comments? Uh, really fun to be here, Johannes. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it was great to be able to speak to you today and uh, show some of the things I'm building. Awesome. And I'm looking forward to meet you again. If you're not coming to Munich, then maybe at reInvent again if you're coming. Absolutely. I'm coming um, to reInvent. I will be there. Awesome. Awesome. Then have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Same bye to bye. you, Johannes. Thank you.